Um, so this, uh, what we usually do after the presentation is we'll just have a bit of an open discussion for the things people want to talk about. Um, and there is an agenda on the um, wiki. Let me just see if anybody's added anything since I looked last time. Cyril, you had you had some things you wanted to talk about, and I'm pretty sure you're here somewhere. There you go. Go for it, Cyril. Hey. Oh, so the things that are there at the moment, Cyril wants to talk about Fustic. And if you go on to the um, wiki and look at the monthly meeting, there's a link there to the discussion uh, that's relevant to what Cyril wants to talk about. Um, and after that, I'd like to have a bit of a discussion about organization and governance. That's also there with the link if you think that sounds interesting. And um, once we've talked about those, we can go to a general discussion. If you've got something important that you want to make sure we get to, make sure you let me know. Otherwise, we might just talk and talk until everyone needs to go to bed. Go for it, Cyril. OK, so uh, I've been asked to present FUSTIC, which, is, which stands for Future Sustainable Territories, Infrastructure and Cities. It is uh, also a Swiss, uh, a Swiss program um, which aim to uh, fund many projects about these subjects. So, uh, there is many opportunities for both uh, FUSTIC and OSR to uh, collaborate. Uh, OSR can collaborate to fund a project or the other way, OSR can propose some uh, projects and uh, see if it can be uh, funded. So what they ask is to just show support to say that uh, we share their uh, what they trying to do and just say okay we are here and we would like to collaborate maybe if uh, we are able to help each other. So this is what is asked. Uh, does the community agree to uh, support the stick projects? Is it clear? <laughs> I'm not quite clear what they what they do. Huh. Um, there is a, a long presentation uh, available. Um, on forum, so maybe I will share my screen to show a little how it looks like. So uh, here, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So it is a project started by EPFL, so and uh, the Department of Architecture, and uh, yes, I, I can't say that much about it. What I know is that they are able to to uh, make uh, people join to work on this kind of topics, uh, which where I am uh, about sustainable uh, things and it's so you can find more details in this presentation. But to be perfectly honest, I don't understand quite all the, the topic. What I know is that the human centric empowerment, culture, trust, commitment, etc. what they say in their presentation. And uh, that they can find some funds to, to uh, finance some projects and uh, which are related to open source ar architecture and then can use uh, the know-how and knowledge from uh, OSR uh, community to 
get better projects, everything will be in open science, open source. So I think it is a mutual interest. But um, really, I'm not uh, quite enough uh, aware of what deeply how it works, to be perfectly honest. But it is some uh, funds from uh, Tutelan uh, State uh, Federation, exactly. Um, yes. Uh, compared to standard projects, it would be uh, more. It will be longer. It's like four or five years la when uh, uh, standard projects is about two or three years. Yes, I just talk and ask some question. I, I'll, I'll tell you if I, I can answer it or not. Do they have any money now? It is money from uh, Tutelan states. So yes, uh, in some in some way, yes. Okay, so they uh, have some and they want to organize seeking funding Yes, the idea is to propose some project and uh, try to get it funded. Sounds great. <laughs> I mean, th those of us who commented on the on the discussion on the forum, um, I think what, what, what we at least basically said was that if you think it looks like a really good idea, then telling them that that it aligned as a you know, telling them that it aligns with our values and we'd love to talk to them more about it, it seems like it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It depends uh, what they want from us. I mean, at the moment, only only a letter to show our support to this initiative. So it's just to say we agree that this kind of projects are good ideas and we want we would like to contribute if we can uh, at some points does anybody think that sounds like a bad idea what are the other projects that they are currently funding or working to achieve their goals is there a list it's really pretty new the announcement has been made uh, during February, I think. So uh, they're going to uh, found many projects uh, using this uh, FISTIC association, but uh, currently there is no projects launched. So it is the beginning. Uh, Professor Cash, uh, which came uh, last time, uh, the, which is uh, the professor I work for at EPFL, uh, push me a lot to present it to West Arch community and to ask everyone to agree to, to support it. <laughs> well, it's nice that he thinks we're important enough to spend time on. But, I mean, it would make sense, like Dean's kind of getting into it. If, if we knew what projects they were already supporting, that would give us a really good flavor of what they're yes. doing, but if, if they're not that far yet, then mm. then we can then we sh then I imagine we could uh, talk about how we look forward to working with them. On but I them. yes, I, I described shortly two projects I've been proposing, which could be eventually uh, funded uh, on forum. So I just yes. <laughs> This is a proposal. We'll see if it get funded or not. But uh, anything related to building and sustainability and uh, energy, etc., could be funded. So uh, let's try to <laughs> to get it. Uh, so uh, uh, one of the proposals is your project, Cyril. <clears throat> Are there more? Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, uh, maybe I misunderstood what you just said. Um, do 
or do we already have a couple OSR projects that were or proposals that we're thinking to put together? Um, I I described uh, very shortly what I proposed, but uh, I don't know at all if it will be accepted or not. Um, for example, it was about but because we were talking about uh, uh, Duncan, for example, the, uh, some time ago was talking about how to uh, develop um, objects for a, 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 um, a provider. Uh, so this is uh, one of the projects uh, I have been uh, proposed is to. Uh, developed some methodology and uh, tools to be able to uh, to produce uh, AFC project library containing uh, objects uh, in an open format instead of uh, uh, software specific formats and uh, to make some tool also to help to convert um, from industrial models to uh, BIM models um that was the first project i was thinking about the other project is one i wanted to work on it for a long time but uh, i didn't have enough time is about uh, fluids and in uh, closed uh, systems because there is many things uh, for uh, like uh, open foam for uh, for other kind of, uh, of analysis but uh, for a closed system it's pretty not that uh, good to be honest cool I, I can think of two more possible things which have to do with sustainability and something they might be interested in the first would be I guess to sit down and finish off the honeybee and uh, what's the other one? Honeybee and whatever the other insect is <laughs> integration into Blender so that you can access ladybug tools. Um, butterfly? Yeah, 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 that's right, butterfly. I'm just writing a post while we talk in the forum. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, uh, right now ladybug tools can only really practically be used with proprietary software. And if it's ported, that would be a good interface that's a full open source stack. Then there is a, another possible project uh, that I was just introduced to by a guy named German Molina, German, German, not sure how to pronounce his name. Um, he comes from the Radiance community. So he's done a lot of uh, Radiance work in the past and he's working on building comfort libraries and is uh, he, he's of an academic background and has been doing some really fascinating uh, research on uh, not just doing simulations which uh, tie comfort to multiple simulation engines. So let's say comfort is not just a factor of daylight, it's, it's a factor of daylight plus energy plus uh, um, noise outside plus your utility bill, bills plus how busy you are you know plus whether you're going to take a train in 30 minutes and you're leaving the house so even though it's hot you're not going to turn on the aircon type of thing so um a, a much more sophisticated model of um of of comfort than the ones usually used in regulations uh and which should govern which should help inform how the building's designed i guess and he is also looking for funding and integration into an open source application because he used to build all this stuff on top of SketchUp and then that went closed. So he said, all right, can't do that anymore. So he approached me saying, hey, let's build this on top of Blender. Uh, can it do that? I said, yeah, possibly. Um, and but, but he's also looking for funding for this type of thing. So maybe that's another possible proposal. Anyway, just okay. ideas. Cyril, you mentioned something I've been talking about. He talking about the whole um, renovation and construction object descriptions, serial passports mm -hmm. and stuff. Right. Yeah, I found some. Um, I found some companies that are doing more work on that, and I found a council and stuff. So, so I could probably put some heads together to send 
Yeah, so it looks like there's stuff happening here in Denmark that might be uh, get the ball rolling as well for that sort of thing. Yes, I, I was more talking about the, you know, about the company with, uh, who asks you to um, make some objects for blind. Or oh, manufacturing like content. Yeah. 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 I was talking about this. How do you think that kind of project fits in with, with Fustic? Um, for example, um, uh, I have some, uh, material library I, I was, I am already working on, um, the idea is to, uh, use this, uh, mater material library to inject it in BIM models to be able to use it directly, uh, for, uh, Building energy modeling, for example. Uh, another way is to use uh, objects and uh, data from uh, uh, HVAC objects to be able to better design the uh, fluid systems. Uh, the idea is to optimize better by having better data. Uh, that's my vision of it. So you're thinking of um, uh, IFC-based um, object models for authoring software that contain pre-specified parameters useful for simulation and stuff like that? Yes, and uh, for a full project, exactly. Uh, yes. Right. Because current libraries uh, are uh, often very poor. Uh, they don't. Uh, they don't have uh, sufficient data, and they are not localized. Uh, yes, currently libraries are not that great, and and when they are not bad, they are only for one on one software. But there is no uh, cross uh, uh, cross platform or uh, uh, interoperable uh, objects. But uh, can we answer Cyril's original question, which is, um, can we get back to them and say that OSI thinks it sounds like a great idea and a great project, and we intend to work together with them and see what we can come up with. I'm all for it. Anyone have a problem with that? That's the closest we can get to a decision-making structure for now. <laughs> Anybody got a problem with that? Now's the time. <laughs> no problem. We made the decision. Well, and, and, and it only took us a week. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next point <laughs> <laughs> let's go cool um dion I've, I've i'm putting a very messy post in the forum on your thread cyril so maybe the two of you can go back and look at it and make sense of what i've tried to write there of these uh these suggestions um sadly i only got three of them noted down So the, the other the other topic that I put on the agenda, and I did it quite recently, so um, I wouldn't expect that, that people necessarily have dedicated time to thinking about it, um, is starting to look at uh, having some kind of, sorry, I'm just trying to find my own text here, some kind of temporary steering committee of sorts, um, and questions like the one that came from Cyril and like some of the initiatives that um, Ryan has been doing for for getting funding to different things, and there's some accounts around the place. It just to me, it sounds like it's time to have uh, a named group of people who are saying, "Yeah, okay, you know, I promise to spend a bit of time on this." Um, and the reason the reason I've, I think it 
it makes sense to call it a temporary steering committee because is that a, 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 an important part of what they need to look at is what is a more permanent way of being organized. Um, yeah, so I, what do people think? Is this, a, is, this an, an, is it too early, too late, the wrong direction? Do we want to stay more open or do we want to be a bit more structured? Or I, I think it'd be poor style for me to do a lot of talking on the subject. I didn't quite understand if you meant that we'll have more groups on different topics or just one group, one small group that's temporary and does everything. Well, my my suggestion kind of is there's, there's a post in the um, what's it called organization and governance thread. Yeah, I read um, it. Didn't yeah. really understand it, what you meant. I must have written it a bit quickly. I, I haven't really said very much about what I think they should do because I, I think that's kind of the job of a smaller group to find out what are the important things that we need to be doing at the moment. Do we need to be spending time making the website better or do we need to spend more time focusing on writing good articles or getting in touch with academia? I mean, there's like there's tons of ideas on the forum and none of them none of them are bad ideas. <laughs> But it might be good if, if we have a smaller group that can start looking at, well, what do we actually want to spend the hours that we have in our free time? What do we actually want to spend those hours on? And then asking people, you know, who's going to put their hand up to help with this? And we've done some of that. You know, we've got people um, taking these videos and managing these meetings and clipping them and making them look good and putting them on YouTube and writing articles on the website. Um, so the kind of process that I had an idea might work is if is if we just um, if we just say you know nominate someone who you think um, who you think might be willing to sit down in a smaller group um, to make some decisions and try and suggest some strategies and some ways forward without everything becoming a, a fragmented long discussion which is a which is a hard way of making decisions and then if, if that process of nominating only ends up with five people then then that's cool if those five people want to spend a, a bit of time having some separate meetings and coming with suggestions for what we should focus on okay yeah i get it that yeah, sounds sounds reasonable to me. i guess the, the 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 other way of doing it is leaving it as it is where where if you've got a suggestion, you kind of need to do it yourself because nobody else is going to do it. Um, and it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard the way things are at the moment to, to, to take some subjects from all of the great ideas out there and say, how about we focus on this one or this seven? <laughs> um, yeah. Ryan, I'm sure you've got some thoughts on this. Raphael, you must have some thoughts on this as well. Well, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I'm on the fence and hesitant about kind of centralized organization. Um, I think it can get muddy and it's hard to do. Um, I, you know, I, I have no answer really to tell you the truth. It's a hard question to answer, but I do like how basically open source in general, um, works where if you're passionate about something you put an idea out there and you just you do the work yourself and hopefully other people then will see what you're doing and, and just jump on board um helping you know similar to you know i'm excited about blender bin and, and you know no one's um allocated me to work on it i just found it interesting and i just jumped on it and, and provided my you know manpower to that project so i do like that and it'd be, it'd be nice to find a a framework um like that for this organization and i had suggested in the in the forum maybe we could adopt um one of these burgeoning frameworks where it's a decentralized organization um and maybe just putz around with that and just to see um if that could be kind of the backbone on how we make decisions 
Um, but again, you know, I don't have all the answers. It's, I just um, centralized decision making is is hard. I I think everybody's you know in this group and likes the freedom of software just because it, it's core base. No one has to ask permission to do anything, <laughs> right? Um, so I guess those are just some. I have no answers, just more questions to throw out there. <laughs> the way I understood it was more that the group would um, motivate people maybe and just make decisions, but like try to motivate people to do more, not just like give them oh, time. motivate. I thought you said moderate. I didn't like that. Motivate, yeah. 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 The way I see this is that looking at other open source organizations like Gentoo, um, I guess there's in Python, there's the PEP system and uh, in KDE, they have, they have something centralized, but the only reason it's centralized is because there is actually a legal organization, which somebody needs to own and do some paperwork on, but that's all they do. Like they don't step on, on developer uh, or projects. All they do is merely handle the organizations of things like Academy, the, the annual event, you know, um, all of the virtual stuff, um, uh, is is fairly decentralized to my understanding. I mean, KD is a very, very big umbrella project. So currently, OSR doesn't have a legal organization, but at the same time, we are attempting to do things that a legal organization might want to do, like create partnerships uh, with other firms. And that those are tricky situations because it's something that it's, you know, it feels it's bigger than one person, so nobody really wants to make the call on behalf of the community. So, so I think there is a bit of a need for somebody to say, "All right, yeah, yeah, um, we, we've listened to everybody, and and um, I, I guess uh, we all collectively agree." So, just just to give a bit more confidence that uh, that a a non-virtual project should go ahead, something which has some sort of a real life affiliation like these project partnerships or or accepting funding or um or later on if you know we organize uh, meetups post covid or something like that so all that type of stuff um i maybe there is a bit of a need for a few core people to um yeah i guess to just take the lead on that and and that could be just like an like another project, uh, I guess we need to document just all of the various initiatives which are or, or or big projects which are going along, and just say who's part of it, and people can come and go as they please, kind of like uh, uh, of course subject to the the culture of the existing people in the group, and see how it turns out. I mean, if I look here, Cyril's busy doing awesome stuff already. In, in his spare time, Duncan, so are you, the, the forum, the wiki, you're, you're helping to, um, uh, even right now, you're, you're the main talker, introducer. Um, I'm just going through the names here, like, you know, Ryan's already spending his time on <clears throat> many open source projects and also kind of leading the way on open source design, like regardless of the software. If I just put my names, like half of these people are already involved in, in cool things. Most recently, Yassine, who's joined here, he's been doing this sort of learning platform thing. So it's, I think people already are kind of saturated with their time. So I, maybe it's good for newcomers to see see a list of who's working on what, to see who they can help and, and who they could join in on, because maybe we don't have a list like that. Maybe that's, I, I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit unsure as well. I'll stop talking. Go ahead, Eugene. 
Hey guys, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to put my camera on. It's a bit late and I haven't uh, brushed my hair tonight. Um, I just wanted to comment in. I, I think we're all talking about the same thing here, which is basically that there needs to be some leadership in the organization because it's not so far from what the Blender organization is actually doing. And if if this needs to be successful, then there needs to be some some form of guidance for the whole community. And there is something naturally happening, which is basically, I think, if we do read the forums, which I'm new to, you can see that a few names do come up a lot, like Duncan's names, uh, Duncan, the Unmold, Serial, and these guys are pushing the whole thing. So maybe you're kind of making decisions already, and if it's more democratized and we know that you guys are actually leading this, then it may be more uh, transparent in a way. Like we know you're actually making decisions and it's fine. We mostly agree with the decisions because it's mostly for the community. So yeah, that, that's my opinion. <laughs> and I've been helping actually. The only reason I'm helping is because I see not loads of efforts being done by everybody. And the only way that we can actually succeed is if we act together in a uh, guided way so that we don't repeat each other's work and actually pull resources together. Yeah, so how have... about... Go ahead, yeah. I mean, how about, yeah, the guys will just do an arbitrary thing that, and say, all right, guys on the forum who have who people generally see on the forum <clears throat> as being active and kind of already uh, you know speaking on terms of they are perceived to be the, the leaders of OSR they just are and if somebody says hey I also want to be we say okay sure now now you are and we just run with that with a list of names for a few months see what happens if you know if and if it works, then uh, we like where it's going, then we continue. And if it doesn't work, then at any time we, we kind of revisit and stop. Like, uh, it doesn't have to be a huge pressure decision. I mean, easy come, easy go. Just try it oh, out. Yeah. Well, there's a distinction between being an, an ambassador and actually uh, being opinionated and making your voice be heard so that there is an action to be made afterwards. And there's not so many people that take actions or motivate others to take actions. And, and that's necessary. I mean, nobody is going to say here, OK, I, I raise my hand up. I want to lead the whole Ozar community. But we, if we were to vote, like, say, there's 800 members, if we were to vote for seven members who actually uh, make certain decisions, not on behalf of the whole community, uh, necessarily uh, in an arbitrary way, but always in, in the same open way. It doesn't really, I don't know. One, I've heard the comment from uh, Ryan, and I don't think that one, what he said necessarily, the decentralized way of organizing this is necessarily uh, against our values. I mean, we're all going to be still able to, to give our comments and the seven people that would lead the community would just be able to uh, get it some more uh, authenticity. Like, okay, uh, here's the main people who lead the group and the others are ambassadors. No comments. <laughs> Well, you know, um, one of the reasons it's hard for someone to say, okay, yes, let's do it. Um, that's why I think it would be great to explore or play around with um, these various kind of open, decentralized, autonomous organization platforms, right? That they're actually codifying a way for decentralized groups to make decisions together. And... It, it doesn't, it's from what I've researched, it, it doesn't require, you know, a 
you know, a central core of people running it is that, you know, you ultimately, the whole group votes on things and the platform, uh, the best ideas kind of float to the top. So it's, 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 a, we're all searching for who's going to make a decision where it's like, Hey, maybe we could just play around with these platforms and the platforms allow us to make decisions together. Right. And it's, and it's all, we're all technology oriented. Right. So it's just fun to play around with these, these, with these things anyways. <laughs> um, so I, I guess I would recommend that as a way forward. Um, I suggested in the, in the uh, forum, some platforms that we could look at and play around with, but it's, 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 I would think it would be an easy way just to uh, establish some direction versus saying, Hey guys, you know, this is our leader, our couple of leaders, and they're going to make decisions. You know, I, I really do like the decentralized approach to it. It's that, you know, ultimately some people uh, will be, you know, some leaders will become busy and will be able to take on certain things. And that's where if you, enable other people to kind of step up with these platforms um it'll you know benefit everybody kind of thing it's just more agile i think it'll just allow it to be more agile we still need to make a decision about which platform to use right well somebody can you know i can just open one like uh well and dion's started one as well just to play around with it and and put it on the forum and say, hey, I'm, I'm looking into this, you know, who wants to play around with, you know. So I'm, I'm willing to do that. It's just something to do and test, right? So no know. one has to make a decision. I, I will just put, <laughs> I would just but have my experiments my on the forum me, and, and I mean, someone I, wants the, to play around. I don't know if you've seen the small website I did, which was, the code was very shit, and I sat this morning with Dion to try and make it work. And to be honest, I don't really, I'm not a professional programmer, and I really don't care about programming. The only thing I like doing is making projects work. And let's just assume uh, something now. If, if Serial's uh, initiative works, and the, there is some funding for projects, who's going to work on them? Uh, is it just we we ask for people who wants to work on this who's gonna screen who wants to actually do things Th there needs to be like some focus on how we deal with things what guidance we need to take and these decisions are hardly made by 800 people or 100 it still needs some some representatives who, i don't know who who can tell us what to focus on more than something else but not disregarding the the small other projects that pop up left and right because if you notice there will be more small projects that just show up in everywhere and it, it will snowball and we will need to focus at some point on making something bigger like blender bim which is becoming big i i can see that as really huge it can replace so many other software that are so closed right now and i really like it like for for many many reasons and this is why i'm putting a lot of my effort in it but i don't know if it's the only focus for osark so what about the other things who who gives guidance on that um i've got some comments um, I think what's really good and important about what you're saying, Ryan, is um, is is we 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 just want to avoid. Well, I don't know if we do, but the, what I agree with you from what you're saying is that we just want to be cautious about this whole tiered representative democracy kind of system where everybody's voting for everything all the time, and you get that sort of distillation of power up to the top. Um, that's the sort of thing that makes me uncomfortable. Um, and um, and it sounds like something that, that, that you sometimes also have a focus on uh, keeping the keeping the activity um, nice and, and, and spread out and flat. Um, I, I haven't looked a lot of those technology platforms, but um, one one of the things that always concerns me with that type of platform is things can very quickly become about how the platform steers processes. 
Um, so, I mean, definitely worth looking at the platforms because some of the platforms um, may be perfect. For example, the what's called Open Collective, it might just be the perfect one for helping us organize outreach to do with funding and decisions to do with funding. It might, you know, we, we look at that and we go, that's, that's exactly what we need for that particular thing. And something else might be better suited for a, another aspect of what we're trying to do. Um, and, and the other thing I was thinking, something you said, you've seen about, um, actually, I can't remember what you said, but I remember what I thought. <laughs> And that was we we are we are already um, we do already have these little groups um, like um, Yan and sorry I don't remember his name who are making sure that the videos get onto YouTube you know that's that's a task that they've said I'll make sure I do that I think Yan's here um, Bruno is making sure that there are news articles on the website. Dion is administering all sorts of things in the background, as well as designing a whole software replacement for, oh, this is a, this is a recording, so for the factory that shall not be named. Um, and it's also important to, it's important to remember, because I hear a lot of people doing this, that um, OSArch is not about, unless you disagree with me, of course, <laughs> OSArch is not about, um, Blender BIM or FreeCAD or IFCJS or any particular solution. OSARC is about bringing all of these things together and creating the ecosystem that's needed to make some, some paradigm shifts here. Um, and if Blender BIM is a really good way of doing that, well, that's great. We support Blender BIM. And uh, when something else is making a great contribution, well, that's great. Then we support that. Um, so, that so there's yeah, that's just something to caution about. I've seen a few people dropping I, in I, here. I, I completely agree with this. I just meant like, let's assume there's another big project like what Cyril is proposing on the table. If there are four or five like these, which ones do we focus on and what resources are pulled towards that? Because naturally everything it seems to happen naturally for now, which is perfect. And I have absolutely nothing against it. It's just... It doesn't scale very well, that kind of solution, yeah. Where, where's the next focus? Sure, because I'm new, of course, but obviously there are a lot of people that are doing loads of things, and I'm just wondering what's the next thing that we'll focus on. Maybe I want to work on that, because Blender BIM is not necessarily something I can improve because I'm not a professional coder, but I can give ideas or do something else on the next project. But then what else are we doing who decides on that uh, how how does it naturally organically happen maybe i don't know because i'm new to open source uh, but i still feel like uh, an organization needs some glue and the glue is being provided by a few people you just obviously can't say okay we're going to be the 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 leaders of the group and then if there is an organization, then we'll have our names on it and stuff and we'll deal with the paperwork and et cetera. But that obviously will happen someday, uh, I feel like. And that's the discussion we're having, if I'm not mistaken. The two of us have been talking a bit for a while now. I think I think Kareem was before Ionis. You put your hand up. Sorry, the little hand icons are not very big. I don't always notice them. <laughs> So uh, I was actually planning to keep quiet, but uh, I can understand. I am fresh here, and I, I can understand that the community is also quite fresh. And uh, I can uh, agree with Ryan. However, uh, before uh, selecting leaders or uh, before defining an organization, it's, it's, it's better to put the rules first, to define some procedures. Um, by the way, most of it is already defined, actually. Uh, I mean, we have GIT, uh, we have the OS Arch community, the website. Uh, something is already set up, but I can easily understand that 
uh, also some part of the infrastructure here is missing. So uh, yes, uh, this also requires some level of uh, thought, but um, the organization, the interoperability between people uh, can also be achieved by the technology itself, where we can just uh, create a new project to uh, maintain that interoperability and collaboration between people, for example. Uh, I just want to suggest that. Thank you. I am yeah yeah uh, so first of all my camera doesn't work so i cannot uh, share it i i what you look like uh, yeah Ooh. i'm kind of uh, with uh, with ryan on this i mean we are we we are at this point now let's say with our organization as we are and we are currently we did not face any problem let's say it's not now that we have a problem to have let's say governance uh and uh, I don't know, I think that uh, the way things are going is good. I mean, we can, we can also have, let's say, an informal uh, team of leaders or whatever we want to call it. But in the end, I mean, the leaders are the ones that uh, are involved, uh, are, uh, are doing the work. So I don't know, I kind of feel that for now, this, this is going pretty well. And uh, I don't know how much then we want to get into this uh, governance where maybe you know there can be some politics or whatever uh, uh, i don't know maybe in the future where we will have a need let's say if we want to make an, an official organization or something let's say okay we would need to have some persons but uh, i don't know for now for now i i like the way that the, the natural let's say flow of things and how things are going i don't know that's that's my opinion go for again again we need your microphone too your microphone Jan. you're muted uh, so I think the way it worked today with uh, Cyril's proposal is actually quite good. Like he comes with a proposal to the uh, meeting. He proposes something we don't have any, if nobody has any objections, we kind of collectively agree on it. So that works actually pretty well, even without any leadership, which makes centralized decisions. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that's a key part of it is that, you know, Cyril has this passion and it's in line, obviously, with OSR. And if he wants to take the leadership and put in the legwork, then I don't, I would love to have, be in an organization that allows that to happen, right? Just, you know, do it. It's obviously in line somewhat with um, what we're trying to do here. And it, it just could evolve in that direction. It's just a, comes down to since it's such a small um, organization with small group already that you know it could evolve in that direction just based on just someone's passion and other people's interest and in, you know adding to it as well so you know I would just like to find a way for Cyril or any others to have to ask the group permission to do something. <laughs> yeah, I just, I know like the funding camp campaigns that I've, I've done, I just did it just because it would, t to get everyone to agree on a way forward, just be hard. It's just like, I'm just gonna do this and put it out there. And it, I know it's good for the group and, you know, so having too many, um, having a structure that, requires a command and control can stifle um, projects. You know, that's, it's propriety softwares that way. And, you know, sta actually standards, don't get me, I guess, going on IFC standards, their, their development stifled because I think there's such a strong 
uh, command and control that ultimately make decisions what should be standardized. Like, I just wish IFC was more kind of like open source development. It's that if you had an idea, you just evolve the, the spec and hopefully other others do too and they'll jump on it and evolve together. So if you, it'd be nice to just try to find a way, right, to run this organization in that way, um, whatever that is. I'm done talking now. Um, I, I, something you said, Aaron, is, uh, I, that we don't have a problem. I think we actually do have a problem. Um, and I think the problem is um, Cyril wants to do something as simple as saying OSR thinks it's a good idea. Um, and that has to wait up to a month or whatever to, 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 for us all to sit here and talk about it. Um, and at the other end, Ryan has a good idea and he goes out and does it on behalf of OSR and it's already been done. <laughs> You know, and those two poles, I mean, we, we I think that we need to actually have a, an agreed way of saying, okay, well, if you're gonna if you're gonna do things on behalf of OSR, all you need to involve is this group of three, five, seven, whatever it is, people. And as soon as you've made sure that they're on board, then you can do something. Um, and it's, I mean, it can still happen by the forum, right? So anyone can see what's happening. But that sort of thing would actually make a huge difference. I mean, I'm not comfortable writing to some of the academic and and companies here in Denmark and saying, um, OSARC would like to start a collaboration with you, or I, as a member of OSARC, would like you to come and talk to me as a member of OSARC about a collaboration. I'm not comfortable doing that at the moment. Um, and I think that's a problem. I think we need some people who feel that they're able to go out on behalf of us with our um I don't remember what we call it but we've we've written quite a few things about what we stand for and so on with with that in their in their bag and go out to an academic organization and say this is who we are this is what i represent and we'd like to we'd like to do this thing together with you whatever that is um yeah i mean Okay, yeah, yeah, there can be a team, let's say, of representatives or something. Uh, that but we, I mean, sorry to in interrupt you, Onus. So that's part of it. But there's also, we need to have a bank account. People want to give us money. <laughs> and somebody needs to be able to sign things. And, and, and you'd have to be crazy to go out and do all of that without some kind of formal backing from the organization. I mean, that just make no sense. And and although although some kind of static organization starts politics, you know what also starts politics? People doing things on their own. That also starts a lot of infighting politics. Um, yeah. No, Sorry, when we arrive at the point that we want to make organization, let's say, or if we want to make organization, for sure we need some some persons, let's say, that uh, step up. Yeah, for sure. That's that, I agree for that, with that. Should we leave it here? Sorry. Gonzalo would like to talk. Sorry, who? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, just quick. Uh, I'm... I'm I'm part of a community, um, like very much unrelated to architecture. It's for it's for Internet of Things, uh, and there we had the same sort of di dilemma of okay, we want a community that it's bottom bottom up, um, but we also need some. Like, we need to deal with money sometimes and this these situations. What we did was create a little association, but we make it we made it clear. Uh, that the association's uh, purpose is to help the community, so it's on the side. It's not creating a, um, a bottleneck for decisions. It's not. It's not. The, everything has to go through the association. But if you if you need to deal with money, as, as Dan can just say, you need to have some legal backing. Otherwise, you cannot. Uh, we organize hackathons with this and these sort of things. And, 
we need to ask sponsors for money and that's the only way that you can do it and people will actually give it to you you see you had your hand up you seen it did you want to say something oh yeah sorry i i was still on mute I was saying, um, I, I just wanted to agree with what you were saying earlier, because I, you Ozark, but I'm not sure that I can and what projects would be good for the community, what to focus on. So I need to ask a few people and just posting on the forum, um, publicly first without even running the idea by someone if it's with the core values of Ozark, even though it's clearly explained in the website and stuff, just to know whether it's in the same direction that we should be taking. Uh, just to run ideas sometimes by a few people uh, and then maybe if, if things are good, then yeah, we can go and make a, a project out of something. And who, who then decides if it's worth it correctly? Who pushes for that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I want to, I, I agree with what you're saying. And I, I just wanted to, to have some framework as to how we were going to do these things. And I'm done talking. Go ahead, Dion. Yeah, so I, I think a couple of observations here. Um, when it comes, Orsarch is more than one project, and there are a growing number of projects um, that are associated or 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 kind of use the Orsarch marketing. It's when 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 decisions need to be made that are related to those projects. I think it's already obvious who the decision makers are. That's pretty clear, right? If somebody comes and Say, I want to do a thing with Blender BIM. I'm the decision maker because I've written a lot of code on Blender BIM. If they want to affect a part of Blender BIM, which is to do with clash detection, I'm like, oh, actually, that guy is the guy who wrote a lot of code. So he's the decision maker, not me. Uh, when it comes to organizing these meetups, I'm not the decision maker. It's people like Duncan and Ioannis, right, and Jan, and, and, and these people are organizing meetups, so they naturally become the decision makers. So I think a decision making uh, structure is already in place for each individual project. It just naturally emerged because these people have the initiative. Um, uh, you know, maybe they brought it to the table at the beginning, uh, maybe they didn't, but most of the time they do, and that's because they believe in it, they want to lead it. And I think that that system's already working pretty well, and there's no need to change that. Uh, then there is uh, the system that you're talking about that we we need a legal organization, and I suggest we just treat that like another initiative, another OSR project. So just as there can be somebody starting an OSR initiative to, uh, let's say, create a whole bunch of new wiki pages about something, this will be an initiative where somebody says, "All right." Um, we are going to have a legal structure to govern a bank account. And uh, of course, this is a bit more weighty decision than other initiatives because it involves money uh, and it involves, well, the, the brand itself of OS Arch. But at the end of the day, as long as we limit the scope to purely uh, those things and not affecting the decision-making process of of the uh, the projects to begin with, then I think it will um, it, it shouldn't be too hard. So I think is somebody here already willing to take the initiative to do the the, the legal legwork of setting up an association, and, and and just just that we have one in name, and or. Or, or at least leading the discussion on it so that we can agree whether or not we're setting one up here or there. And uh, like, like Duncan's already doing that a lot. And so I think he should uh, be the, uh, take the initiative. Well, he's already taken the initiative. So I think he should kind of make the decisions on these things. And we're already here discussing and people will speak out if there is an issue. And I think the concerns 
are being addressed. Like, like, as long, like Ryan's expressing concerns about decentralization, but if we, we can solve that, this is a problem which can be solved, we can say, all right, there is a delineation of, of, um, of responsibility here. The responsibility is not to affect the decision-making of individual products. It should not stop somebody from um, you know, d d uh, doing something on a project. This is purely so that we have somebody managing the legal ba the bank account. Or this is purely so that we have three people who at the who and, and so that we can set a process of let's say two weeks because that's work that, that that's come up a few times now so uh, no matter what new proposal comes in it has two weeks for uh for a discussion like you must allow a period of, of, of public review and or, or whatever it happens to be and let's say let's say we want a new and let's say any matters to do with the public branding because those are more weighty matters here are five people who could say, who, who could pull the brakes within those two weeks and say, hold on, this, this needs more discussion. And as long as that doesn't happen, go right ahead. And I don't know, I'm just brainstorming out here, but uh, it, it doesn't seem like a huge unsolvable issue that, that, that you know, I, I think we can strike a balance here. Um, and I'm uh, personally, I think Duncan, is very passionate about that he's brought this up many times he should be leading this he should not feel he he should be free to take the next step and and he, he's done all the research on and, and and looked at so many options go do it take the next step you know really much more than all the rest of us so far i believe because you've 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 been looking at it again and again and again duncan you need to make a decision on the legal entity. Are we under an umbrella like Open Collective? Do we start one in one country? Do we start one in another? And if, if you think you need to call out somebody else in here to help you with, uh, I, I don't know, setting up the company name, more than happy to, at least I am, more than happy to lend my time, I think go for it. Anyway, I'll yeah, that was it. I'm Matt, back on mute. I second that. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Completely agree as well. Well put. I mean, the the problem with that, whether it, whether it's me or Peter Pan, the problem with that is when when I'm unsure about something, I'll ask. I'll ask the people I want to ask, right? And and I think what we need is a group who who we we all feel represents the the breadth of of experience and opinion. Um. That that that's that's kind of my problem, and it's not because I don't I don't want to make decisions that people get grumpy about. Yeah. You no, know, I've done enough politics to be fine with that, but um. But it, it creates a whole lot of problems, right? Disagreeing about things. So to just be really good to have uh, a small group who can quickly make some of these core decisions. Um, and I've I've thought of, thought several times of just writing to those of you who I know are the ones who are doing most of the work and uh, doing particular projects, and just saying, well, why don't we just start making some decisions? But that's fundamentally undemocratic. That's why I haven't done it, um, because, well, I mean, it, it just is, right? <laughs> it's fundamentally undemocratic. So what, what I'd like to suggest right now is that we have, people obviously want clear suggestions. I suggest we have a two-week window where we nominate the people who we think um, should be uh, empowered to sit down and talk together and come up with some answers to a whole lot of these questions um, and then present the answers they have um, to, to keep this discussion moving. So that's that's what I suggest. And, and I have no problem being a, an important part of that, that'd be great, but it's really important <clears throat> that, it's, that it's a group of people who are all interested in these issues and are all willing to go in and, and look up. I mean, Ryan has spent 
more time on looking at decision making structures and I've spent time looking on some of the bureaucratic stuff. <laughs> And, and making a decision purely from a bureaucratic perspective would be a problem. And, and only focusing on decentralized anarcho-syndicalist organizational structures is a problem when you need a bank account, right? Um, so that's my suggestion that we, lead, that we open a window of two weeks where people just politely and quietly suggest someone and those people can then say yes or no. And if we've got a group of three people or five people or seven people, then um, that group finds a way of having some meetings, which of course are, are public and moving on from there. If you read my original post, you'll see that I've, that's kind of what I've suggested, that we have a, a small group that's temporary and we've agreed from the beginning that they, that they have to be disbanded um, when and if we find a more permanent structure. Um, but one that, that makes decisions about, because we had, there was a really interesting discussion that we started and like lots of people agreed with that discussion, which was we need to have some kind of um, foundational organization, which has um, a section of users and a section of developers and a section of from industry and a section from academia. And it sounds great when we say it, right? But how do we do it? <laughs> um, because that's what you need to have to, to go to market and to say to a huge engineering firm who's got some developers um, and to go to the EU and say, you know, Lumber engineers and EU, we've got this great idea. Let's sit down and talk together. Anyway, so that's that's my suggestion for what we do. I'll of course write a post on the on the forum suggesting that. And thanks for saying nice things about me. It's always nice. I think time might be um, might be spent for the day. Jan, did you want to say something? Oh, I did, but it's been pretty long. Uh, I mean, we can of course go ahead and do what uh, Duncan suggested now, but I personally, for me, the better way would be what what I understood Jan wanted to do is like anybody can suggest something in the community either agrees with it or not in the two weeks and there's no fixed group of decision makers the way you speed up the decision making process basically and you still keep the whole community involved but yeah well, i think it makes sense uh, to have a set up a team let's say as duncan that they're gonna look into it. Anyone that wants to be present, maybe discussions is free. So I think it makes sense. I just, I just want a smaller group of people that we can sit down and talk who, who want to get involved. I mean, at the moment we're twenty-one people here. It just doesn't make much sense. Um, yeah. Well. I think I might have said what I wanted to say for today. We'll see what happens on the forum. Oh, there's a long post. Right, let's just spend a moment reading uh, Dion's post. We have well exceeded the two hours, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, I think we'll say that we're finished, right? Um, and I will read Dion's post after the meeting, which is right about now. Thanks everyone for being here yep. again. These are going well. They're well visited. We get, it's pretty typical that we get 20, 25 people at a time. And I've noticed there's typically sort of three or four or five new faces. Um, so this is really great. Um, and I can see the number of followers on, um, on Twitter and on LinkedIn. It just steadily rises the number of views of the things that we're sharing steadily rises we get a lot of retweets on twitter um so things are going really nice and that's just organizational stuff that's not to do with the actual projects we're finding there's so much cool stuff happening okay cool. thanks for today guys thanks yeah. everyone thank you everyone so, great bye guys bye